All right, first and foremost, give all praise to you. How about Shimei Oshai Baruch Thun? Give us a set greeting all the brothers and sisters scattered across the four corners, teaching his word with sincerity and charity. Prince of Power, Israelites, I'm Brother Phineas. And I'm Brother Esaias. And Brother Esaias, and we're here to give a short lesson, another short lesson on um, on the Hamashiach because there's a lot of narrative going on about the Hamashiach, especially within the Christian church, that the Hamashiach broke the Sabbath day, so it's okay for us also to break the Sabbath. <laughs> So we're going we gonna to debunk that real quick um, through the spirit of the Hamashiach, through the spirit of the, uh, the Ruach Wadash. Um, so we'll start with uh, Matthew chapter 12, and uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 11, but we're also going to jump to a couple precepts within that uh, context. The book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ear of corn and to eat. All right, so we see that on the Sabbath, the disciples started to hunger. They with the Hamashiach. They started to hunger, and they began to pluck the corn um, in this cornfield. Let's just go ahead and go to Le Leviticus chapter 23, verse 22. Let's go ahead and jump to that and go ahead and knock that out. To show you that it is lawful to go through, because you can get them for, for, for stealing. If you just go to somebody's field, you can't be, just be plucking... You know what I'm saying? Start grabbing. You know, if I had a field of strawberries, you can't just come through and just start eating my strawberries, man. You on my land, you stealing. But there's a, actually a law that's set in place that will permit that. Uh, Leviticus 23, 22. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 22. And when he reaped the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. All right, so you know you're not supposed to. End. The gleaning is those things that fall off when you're harvesting, and just certain certain corn or whatever whatever fruit or vegetable that you're harvesting, it, they they fall to the ground. You're supposed to leave those things down down there on the ground, and then in the outer corners, in the outermost edges of the uh, field, you're not supposed to harvest those. You're actually supposed to leave those there also. Keep going. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor mm -hmm. and to the stranger. You're supposed to leave those unto the poor and to the stranger, unto the sojourner. Keep going. I am the Lord, your God. I am Yahweh, your Allah. Um, to go back to that, that Matthew 12. So we see that, you know, going through that corn, you can't get them for, for, for stealing because it is lawful for them to pick that corn on those outer edges or that's on the ground. Um, that haven't been harvested and that's supposed to be left there for them to do that uh, Keep going up But when the Pharisees saw it they said unto him behold thy disciples do that Which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day uh -huh. So the disciple I mean the Pharisees seen them and and you know pretty much tried to condemn them and say You, you know what I'm saying your disciples are doing something that is not lawful and so that's what the Pharisees were pretty much always around Yahweh Shah to do to make sure that the lamb was perfect, to make sure that the lamb was blameless, right? They were the inspectors of the lamb throughout his three years of ministry. They were there to make sure that that lamb was perfect. So it's just crazy to say that Yahweh Shah was, was, that he actually broke, or who the world called Jesus Christ actually broke the Sabbath day and then, then say he was blameless or that he's the perfect lamb of God. You can't say that if he's saying that he broke the Sabbath day. All right, but we know he did not break the Sabbath day and that's what we're here to to um, to show you today. Keep going on. Verse three, but he said unto them, have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger and they were with him? So anytime, anytime the Pharisees tried to condemn uh, Yahweh always goes, not just the, the Pharisees, but even Satan, always goes to the scriptures. Have you not read? It is written. So have you not read 
um, when David entered into the temple and ate the showbread, which was really only for the priest. Keep going. Have you not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, mm -hmm. but for only the priests. But for only the priests. Now they went in there and David was hungry. Him and his men were hungry um, coming from battle. And they were starving. But they were permitted to eat this bread. And we're going to see why they were permitted to eat this bread within the context of these certain examples. He's giving them, he got about three examples he's going to give on why it is lawful or why it is, why it is permitted in some cases to do certain things that probably wouldn't be permitted uh, any otherwise. Verse 5. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? He said the priests is another example. Now, uh, David was permitted to eat the showbread because of he was because of the hunger, because of the hunger. Now, there was other things that um, other other kings went in that went into the the temple and burned the incense and became a lepers. And, and a lot of times they got punished for doing these uh, things. But David wasn't punished because he went in there and they were hungry and they were doing they were doing something that was permitted the most high permitted them to eat that show bread because of that hunger because if, if they're gonna mess around and die mess around and starve um we see here in this in this in this second part you see the priest who who gives the daily sacrifices and give the sabbath sacrifices it's supposed to be uh, certain statues and ordinances set up for them to make certain sacrifices on the sabbath they are set up there and um they are permitted to do these sacrifices even though there's no the, the sabbath day is no supposed to be no killing of fire it's supposed to be no cooking so they can make these sacrifices and eat of these sacrifices um because they're priests because that's their job because they're doing these things for thus says the lord so the most high permits them to do these ordinances also so yahweh is bringing these things out showing them within the scriptures where these exceptions have been made and these 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 um these certain examples of of the most high permitting them to do certain things that um in any other in any other case it wouldn't be permitted keep going now let's see the next example verse six but i say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple so the priests who were who were who were subscribed to the temple the priest who was subscribed to this temple, they were permitted to do their sacrifices for the work that they had to do within the temple. The, the, Yahweh is telling you that there's someone that's greater than the temple in front of you. There's one that's greater than the temple. And so the, the disciples are the servants. They are the servants of, of Yahweh who's greater than the temple. So if they're permitted to do these certain things, you have to be able to, to your mind should be, be able to wrap around um, them being hungry and being permitted to be able to eat some corn that's left from a harvest. Keep going on. Verse 7. But if ye had known what that meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Ye would have not condemned the guiltless. Ye would have not condemned the what? Guiltless. The guiltless. Come on. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Because the Son of Man is even Lord or even Master of the Sabbath day. Continue on. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And so the Pharisees still didn't get it from those examples. So Yahweh Shah went in, there was a man with his hand uh, withered in the synagogue. Um, the Pharisees probably already knew that Yahweh Shah was probably going to heal that hand. And uh, they asked him, is it lawful? Before he even do it, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Because again, they had these certain fence laws. They had these fence laws around. Well, these are these traditions of men. These are the things that the, um, Yahweh Shah actually hated. Who the word called Jesus Christ, he actually hated um, these these traditions of men these washing of hands and washing of pots and these certain fence laws that were put around the law to, as precautions to keep you from breaking the law but they weren't necessarily thus says the lord that's why you go into the matthew chapter 5 you'll see i know you heard it said 
I know you heard it say, instead of it as it is written or in the, haven't you read in the scriptures but you have heard it said these are the teachings of the Pharisees these things aren't really in the scriptures alright um, but we see we see that the, the Pharisees were pretty much trying to try um, Yahweh Shah and that's what they were there to do three years of, the, of that ministry the Pharisees were always around to make sure that that lamb was perfect they were the inspectors of the lamb to make sure that that lamb was un was 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 not blemished right that that lamb was perfect that that was the perfect lamb of god so if we say that that yahweh shall broke the sabbath then he can't be the perfect lamb of god he can't be blameless he can't be guiltless verse 10 and behold there was a man which had his hand with it and they asked him saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath days that they might accuse him and he said unto them what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fall into a pit on the sabbath day he will not lay hold on it and lift it out all right so which man of you that i have a lamb or a sheep and it falls into a pit you won't go lift that that lamb out of that pit which one of you won't do that you see what i'm saying so that's why these fence laws that they, they won't hold and he just pretty much just showing them the um the hypocrisy and and, and the fallacy in and within their own within their own thinking and within their own parameters that they don't put around themselves trying to act like they're 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 actually um living thus says the lord like they like they these most righteous uh the most righteous people uh within israel so he just pretty much cutting them with their own doctrine which one of you won't do that um, I'll give an allegory also about the speed limit. Um, it say if you are you doing 75, say if, say if you're on the highway and the speed limit, you're on the highway and the minimum speed limit on the highway is 40 miles per hour. The minimum speed limit on the highway, 40 miles per hour. And there comes a traffic jam. There comes a traffic jam and you have to drive like 20 miles an hour. You have to go down about 20, 15 miles an hour you driving because of this traffic jam should you be punished for going under the 40 miles an hour when there's a traffic jam if you did that to save lives if you did that to make sure that you didn't die that you didn't kill the people that you're responsible for inside of the car should you be punished for that should the police get behind you and say wait you know should you police pull everybody over right and then now take you take it in another just to take it another uh a level say you doing you on the highway and the speed limit again is the minimum speed limit the minimum speed limit again is 40 miles per hour and everybody's going 75 80 miles an hour and then you 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 in your car you doing 15 20 miles an hour in the fast lane and you don't even have your emergency lights on meaning you just over there doing 15 20 miles an hour nobody even know why you're doing 15 20 miles an hour everybody flying by you Everybody flying by you, people honking at you. Eventually, the police probably going to get behind you and wonder and find out why are you doing that? Why are you going 15, 20 miles an hour? Because there's no reason for you to be doing that. And then you may get a ticket for driving under the minimum speed limit. You may get a ticket for that if you don't have proper reasoning. And so this is what the Most High is trying to bring out. There's certain situations that are going to permit, that are permitted um that are certain situations that permit um for you to for you to break which will, in, in any other case would be breaking the sabbath but um in doing these certain things um you you saving a life or it's just something that you just had to do you know what i'm saying you got to just evaluate the situation um on your own and just look at the situation um if you can avoid it you can avoid it but uh you don't want to just be you don't want to take this and just and just make it where you always, you know what I'm saying, breaking the Sabbath. You always find certain reasons to break the Sabbath. But um, there are certain reasons, there are certain um, excuses that you can have, especially with dealing with the service of the Most High, the way you could be breaking the Sabbath and still um, be under, be blameless. Let's go keep going on. Let's go ahead and finish up. How much then is a man better than a sheep? He said, how much then is a man better than a sheep? I can save a man's life. You'd rather save a sheep than a man? Come on. 
Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. Therefore, it is it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. That was what Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through 11 is trying to tell you. That is, it's lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. There are certain situations, especially when doing good things, when doing good things like giving alms to a brother or giving alms to a sister or helping the poor. All right, there are certain things that you can do or ministering the word or going out on the highways and byways and bringing your people in. Some of these things are, are permitted to do. It's good. It's, it's okay to do good on the Sabbath day. Um, with that, we're going to say Shalom.